Hey everyone, how you doing? This is Brian from Astrolips 2000 and welcome to my new YouTube channel. Um, this is my first video and I decided to make this video to share with you guys my creation <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. It's called the Raininator. Sick name, right? Um, and what it does is it's a device that I created to leave outside with my telescopes when I'm shooting all night to let me know of bad weather such as rain or snow uh, that may come along that was not caught in the forecast. Um, so unfortunately I had an incident where I left my gear outside and a swale snowstorm came through and dumped a bunch of snow on my gear and luckily I caught it a few minutes in and I was able to throw a blanket over my gear and um, stop a lot of the snow from getting in there to you know stop it from being ruined. Um, so after that happened, that like got me really thinking like there's got to be a sensor or something out there that I can buy or maybe that's intended for something else that I can buy and modify to use to leave outside to protect my gear at night. So I um, did some searching and didn't really find anything to be honest with you. Um, mostly what I found were these which are raindrops modules. These kept popping up on Amazon. So. This isn't going to work unless you have something to attach it to. Um, so I wouldn't say luckily, but that same week my downstairs sink overflowed and dripped some water on the floor where I have whoa, one of these. And this is a uh, water sensor for your house that you place on the floor. And if you have your water heater break or any kind of sink backup, anything like that, the water touches these two metal pieces sticking down right here, completes the circuit, and triggers the alarm that you just heard. Um, this is also connected to my Wi-Fi and will send an email to my phone to let me know that there's a, a leak or something going on at home. Um, so when that happened in the same week, that got me thinking like, uh, this only has these two little metal pieces sticking down. I wonder if I could somehow take this panel, attach it to these two sensors, and if this touches water, touch it, trigger the alarm. And it worked. So um, after it worked, I built a few prototypes and cardboard boxes and stuff to make sure it worked before I finally came up with this idea. And this cost me probably about $50 in parts on Amazon, including the dew strap that I had to add. And it's fairly easy to make. I just, you'll need a drill to uh, drill some of these little holes in the top. But other than that, it's just a six by six electrical conduit box that I purchased from Amazon. Um, same thing with all these parts. So I'll put links down below so you guys can buy all these same parts if you want or something close and get your own parts on Amazon. Um, it does use a sensor much like this one that connects to your home Wi-Fi. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz network it uses um, most routers now come our dual band they're 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz I'm not an IT guy or anything like that but that's just a regular standard router that I have at home and it does work with this like most security cameras and stuff are 2.4 gigahertz um, so you won't have an issue with that also um, where I set my scopes up and the sensor is probably 60 to 70 feet away maybe more from where my Wi-Fi router is and it connects with no issue. Um, being that this is, uh, sometimes we don't shoot two, three, four weeks. I'm in New Jersey with the smoke and the rain and, and the bad weather that every time I put this out, I always want to test it to make sure it works. Um, and all I do is just touch the top of it and your fingers have enough moisture in it to complete the circuit to trigger the alarm. So here's how it works. It's got these six little panels on the top. A little dust there, sorry. And all I have to do is either touch it or water or snow touches these and that will trigger the alarm like so. There's the alarm from the sensor, which will then send the alarm noxiously uh, to my cell phone. Flight sensor water leakage alarm, pretty cool. Um, it turned out to work better than I ever could imagine. I thought I came up with this maybe a year and a half ago, and I've been using this one, as you see, for probably a year now. I've made a few for friends, um, as this one you can see here is for a friend, as they need them, and they're not very hard to make. Um, so uh, I'll put the 
I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer and give you guys a close up and show you exactly how it is, how I put this thing together. All right, so let's check it out. Okay, everyone, and we're back. This time I moved the camera and got a little bit closer so we can get a better view of how I put this thing together. Um, so here it is, kind of like a 45 degree isometric view we have going on here, pretty sick. So here's the uh, box here, just the six by six electrical conduit. Here's the dew heater, just uses a regular USB. It's got low, medium, and high. And I use this thing all winter long and it worked great. Like I said, I was getting false alarms because the, just like a telescope, the box has to be slightly, warm, slightly warmer than it is outside to stop the dew from forming on here. And then in the winter, it would melt the snow when it landed on here. And that I know it works because I tested it. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take the top, I'm gonna take the dew strap off. Got this from Amazon again. It was round, but from being on here for so long, it's taken the square shape. So I'm just gonna set this to the side. These are normally screwed down. This is a waterproof box um, to keep the humidity, dew, condensation, whatever from the inside because the sensor is very sensitive, I found. So uh, here's when I take the top off. Got a little piece of Velcro because I normally just uh, Velcro the sensor to the bottom so it's not flopping around in here. So here's the bottom of the box. No modifications to this whatsoever other than that little piece of Velcro I put in the corner. So I'm just going to move this over to the side here as well. Okay, so here's the lid. You can see the little panels that come individually like this. And I just drilled the hole for the top piece wire to fit through and holes were big enough to fit the zip ties through that I had. Um, so that's how I mounted them. I just drilled the holes, like I said, and, and they're just zip tied in. Overall, the little holes and gaps that were left over, I just used uh, hot glue to fill in all those uh, little gaps. So for the wiring, it's very simple, each board comes with two wires off of it to complete the circuit. So you just have to wrap all the same ends together from all the boards and connect them so you only have two wires coming out. And the sensor had, let me just unbolt this, take these off. Okay, so here's the sensor. Uh, the only modification to the sensor is these little holes here, I drilled them bigger so that I could just push these clips on to the uh, to the holes. Like so. The sensor does run on batteries. Um, I've had this sensor for about a year and a half now and haven't had to change the batteries yet, although I probably should. Um, again, I, I, I make sure I test it every time I put it out there just, you know, so there's no issues and I know it's working. Um, yeah, so this is didn't anything crazy to build this, just coming up with the idea and what materials to use that would work best. Um, but the sensor is really cheap, and like I said, there's multiple apps that you can use that are free, and they all work amazingly well. So uh, that took a lot of the hard work out of it for me by having an app and sensor that I didn't have to create. So um, let me see when I touch this. I get an alarm. There we go. And then, you will shortly hear the alarm going off on my phone. So, pretty sensitive. Alright, so I'm going to put the top back on here. And uh, hopefully this is helpful to some of you people out there who want to make your own Rainonator. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video that I put together uh, showing you the Rainonator and I can't wait to see some of the ones that you guys end up building yourselves or incorporate these sensors into your setups to protect your gear. Um, one other thing I should mention is that another level of protection is you can take out insurance on your gear, which I did that as well. I took out insurance through my supplemental policy through my homeowner's insurance 
cost me $14 a year, and it gives me $25,000 in what's called no ask coverage, which means that they don't ask if I make a claim, apparently they just pay it. I haven't had to do it yet. Um, but if that includes wind protection, me dropping it, it being stolen, etc. Um, if I lose it, they cover it, they told me. Uh, so that's definitely something worth looking into if you guys uh, have it. Uh, I just strongly suggest you maybe checking that out. All right, so I'm going to make a few, uh, couple more, some more videos and see how this goes. And thanks for checking out my uh, channel and my first video. Uh, appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Thank you.